Welcome to Every Day It's Macaroni. I'm Joy Alford Brand. And I'm Juliet Connell. And we're the hosts of Everyday Macaroni, the podcast. This podcast is a look at the lighter side of life, where we talk about our adventures as a modern blended family. So sit back, relax, and prepare to have your funny bone tickled. Welcome back to episode three of Everyday Macaroni. What started out as a single Halloween episode has now become a (laughs) two-parter. Mind you, these are just a handful of the stories we could tell, but the episode was getting so long that I had to split it into two parts, and this is part two. We pick up where the last episode about Death Takes a Taxi Ride leaves off. And before we get into the story of the corpse bride, of course, you're going to need a little background. So here we go. I just could not believe that story, though. I was, again, another... Could you mean it, uh, giving, like, some sort of, I don't know, theme to that? Could you imagine just, like, putting that in some sort of Benny Hill kind of <laughs> music and speeding Quick, up the call film? call the taxi. <laughs> call the taxi. I just... It was just the craziest... Uh, I don't know. The craziest story. I, that's probably the top of the crazy stories oh, that on. I have heard that come out uh, of no, no, no. this family. No, no, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> I can think of a few more. <laughs> but in terms of, well, first of all, that's not your immediate, well, that's not my immediate right. experience. Oh, absolutely. I mean, right now, and, but I've and got plenty more. Talking, to go. about, <laughs> talking about how comfortable, right, my family is. With our inevitable, which, you know, Mm -hmm. is death eventually, right? You know, and owning the funeral home and Mm -hmm. carting. How natural it is a part of life. Absolutely. And Mm -hmm. and they have absolutely no problem with it. I mean, they will wail, I'll tell you, with with the best of them. (laughs) They will wail. Just the frankness and the the at ease they are with what happens and what you need to do kind of brings us to... This next this topic, next topic, yeah. Where uh, okay, so for me, this one because I have seen the level of discomfort that you have exhibited <laughs> when it's become a topic of conversation <laughs> at Monday night dinner. <laughs> I think it's important to back up and give a little bit of a backstory before we <laughs> tell the, the story, and part of that includes explaining your mother's strength of character. She is one who has a very definite idea about things. And that includes her overall self-image. I have to say, that is one thing that I have noticed about your mother and your Aunt Kirula and mm-hmm. your Aunt Peppy and, and Aunt Doris. And I've met Roman the one time and was very appropriate mm-hmm. looking and conducted himself in a particular way. And they all are always very polished and they're all that's not my special skill i just have to say (laughs) that's my grandparents too really Mm -hmm. well your grandfather i could see that yeah yeah he had a very particular way of always looking so and your dad's much my grandfather yeah my grandfather was always big on always making sure that your best foot was forward and he was right because people do look at you and they have preconceived notions about who you are and what you Mm -hmm. what you are by right. how you look, and particularly in that generation. As we get a little more progressive mm-hmm. in our attitudes and perspectives and things like that, we tend to worry less about that, like the ripped jeans and stuff like that. Right, and we so. tend to be a little less formal mm-hmm. and, and whatnot. For him and for really a lot of my family, it really is. It's a, it's a very important... It's very important for them to hold themselves to a particular Certain standard. standard. Yeah. And it's, it's just a personal sort of thing. But your mother takes it to a whole new level. Yeah, my mom, I, I like what I like. She likes what she likes, obviously. She, growing up, was always, I mean, it took her a good hour to get ready. My mom, wow. She would do her eyelashes just so. She had every single gadget that the 50s and 60s came up with to curling eyelashes, to eyeliners, to lip liners, to she had a beautiful wig at one point. 
even though I she had a wearing wigs too. Even though she had a good head of hair, like that. Yeah, but that I think that was, was a, a time, a thing that you would do it in that time period. You yeah, would have wigs. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Because my mother had one, I remember. Yeah, and you know, the, it, every, I I everything was very one. specific. <laughs> <God>. <laughs> very specific. Very, very, um, just so. Right. Exactly. And that was my mom and she enjoyed that. There's pictures that I've found of her. So we had, I think it was like an amateur photographer in the neighborhood when we lived Mm. in California. And I'm talking, I might not have even been born yet. I mean, we lived Mm. there until I was only three and he needed shots for his portfolio. For his portfolio. And my mom had all of the latest clothing, all the latest styles. Like I said before, they had this beautiful red oh, wool. I know what you're talking about. I know the pictures you're talking right? about. Right? Yeah. Red wool sofa that was to die for. If I could only find that thing now. Oh, I know. Wouldn't you know, it be great? Be, like, it'd be awesome. But if- there are pictures of my mom in like real kind of she-she kind of, mm-hmm. you know. She, one, and one, I know the pictures. Capri I've seen them. with the magazine. Right. And one of them, she's like on her stomach and she's got her feet up yep, behind crossed, her crossed. Yes. Right, crossed with her little feet kind of high heel flip floppy things and there's another picture of her with a very a-line well, kind of dress mules yes all right <laughs> so she so just to give you a picture of what my mom likes and what kind of thing what what her expectations are right right so she is always done to the nines and and she's taken a while to get dressed and the whole nine yards so there's a lot of detail that she puts in And a lot of time that she puts Mm -hmm. in to looking the way she does. Mm -hmm. And I I remember thinking, I mean, this was, I was little and I was already thinking, oh my gosh, how horrible is it going to be when I start getting gray hair? So my mom is just really into keeping herself looking the way she looks, right? And she's very proud of that. And she enjoys that she still can do that. She's the first one in our immediate family to get a tattoo. tattoo. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you know, and I think that that's hysterical. Well, let's uh, let's talk about that tattoo for a second. Yeah, yeah. That was an announcement she made during one of our Monday night dinners, right? That she said, I have tat- two tattoos. Can you guys see where they are? And I'm thinking to myself, uh-oh. Here I know. Come, the pants are coming off or something. <laughs> and I thought to myself, uh, I cannot believe that my mom <laughs> just it, got tattoos. Is it going to be the Spanish flag somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> My mother, my mother (laughs) is so old fashioned in some thing, in some ways. However, she's so progressive in other ways, right? Mm. My mom was the first person I knew to get electrolysis anywhere in the face. I mean, do her eyebrows or whatever it is, get rid of hair wherever, whatever. And as a kid, I would say, you know, oh my gosh, did that hurt? And she was like, oh no, not at all. Now, of course, I have friends who are going through electrolysis and, and whatnot. And uh, oh no, it hurts. And, uh, and believe me, Well, I we know. suffer for our beauty, do we not? Uh, I mean, I, I don't. I guess. I, I comb my hair basically most days. I but. very minimal. <laughs> you well, know? I have myself had laser hair removal. Yeah, and, yeah, me and too. It and it doesn't sting. It it's like a oh, hot metal brush <laughs> rubbing against <laughs> your flesh. That's what that is. That's brush. what that's like. Yeah, she ended up, I guess back in the 50s and 60s, it was a big deal to have very pencil drawn in eyebrows and to the point where a lot of that generation lost the ability to continue to grow eyebrows. Mm-hmm. So she went to some dermatologist and they drew on and tattooed mm-hmm. two brand new eyebrows mm-hmm. and they look really it. good yeah they're did pretty good yeah very very good job my mom kind of her and i are are diametrically <laughs> opposed diagonally I, I, diagonally opposed <laughs> <laughs> diagonally <laughs> diagonally i think you said diagonally <laughs> yeah we're two opposites to to a certain degree we do share a lot of similarities but physically speaking the fact that she has always kind of colored her hair very very blonde i mean she was platinum when i was born very into the spotlight and I'm the complete opposite very loud and and I can wait 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 wait, wait, I can wait I get you wait a minute (laughs) 
my left ear. I'm going deaf. <laughs> but to be fair, there and, are certain places where I feel comfortable enough <laughs> to be loud, to be loud, extremely loud. But to be fair, in order to be heard, sometimes yeah, in my you family, got, yeah. you gotta you gotta honk the horn. <laughs> That is true. That's exactly. Yeah. Which brings us to... Dun, dun, dun. Hmm. What, what are we calling this? Uh, uh, hmm. You know, I don't think we really assigned a title to this. I was going to say The Corpse Bride, but no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's pretty good, though. That actually is very, very good. I've written about this in, my, in the draft, yeah. but I didn't really assign a title to it, and now I think I have one. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. What, well... You know, Again, harkens back to what I've said about death and Mm -hmm. whatnot. That I'm not as comfortable as some of the older generation Mm -hmm. in my family is with death. And growing up, it's not like I went to funerals. It's not. So that whole death thing, I mean, I was always the kid that was afraid of my parents dying. Mm -hmm. For whatever reason, that was always in the back of my head. You know, you watch mini series that I used to watch with my mom gone with the wind and the thorn birds and whatnot and everyone's dying left and right and you're just like wow what would it be like not to have my mom or dad there or whatever so it's just a very foreign concept for me this story is kind of funny well wait but, but before we get to that story you brought up a fact when we were talking about what we were going to talk about mm-hmm. a little bit you brought up a fact that I didn't know about your parents and that was about the funeral home they actually oh, right. considered that as yeah. a see that's as a business for yeah a while, right absolutely so my family's really tight-knit right and my dad's an only child but my mom is one of five and one of her sisters stayed in Spain but the rest all came here so between my mom and her three other siblings, right? There was always talk among the the older siblings of owning a funeral parlor. And even as a small kid, I, I'd look at them and think to myself, you guys are all crazy. <laughs> I'm glad there are people who can do it. Sure thing, and absolutely. I, I, and they do, the people that I've, because my mother passed away when she was 59 and a half. So mm-hmm. she's been gone the, that was 2000, 2002. And the, the people who at the funeral home, they were, they were great. And I appreciate that. And that's a good profession to be in. It's, Absolutely. It, and it's, it's just, our, uh, you know what? Especially it, now, look at what they're having to do uh, with COVID and all that stuff. Gosh, yeah. So I'm thankful that there are people who are out there who care and that do a good job. But that, I personally could not do that job. No, <laughs> no, I could not do it. It's not something that I would even consider. Right. I mean, it's just, it's, it's, it's one of those things that it's totally out of my wheelhouse. Completely out of my wheelhouse. No, but you can hold on to the cat while they're I could totally hold the on surgery. to a, a cat. During the, during the surgery with no anesthesia. <laughs> Precarious surgery with no <laughs> anesthetic. <laughs> In the right. garage with the straight razor. <laughs> okay, so anyway. My mom, there were a couple of things that my mom growing up has always said. One, she put her foot down that she would never go to a nursing home. Never. You know, we're going to talk about that later. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. (laughs) But that was just a known, a known variable. I don't know what to call it. It's just, it is not, we're not doing that. Her option is to get chained up in my attic before she would ever go to a nursing home. Well, that's not exactly the version of it that I heard, but we can talk about that later. Second, she had said, you know, it was during, I I think, one of the holidays. And you have to understand that when we get together for the holidays, right, for whatever reason, the, well, no, I know for whatever reason, my mom has always been really lucky with all her siblings that whoever they married into, they had really either tiny families or their families were estranged or whatever the case may be. So we've always been the lucky ones to have everybody. Okay, well, we can talk more about that too. To our house. My perspective of it is, yes, <laughs> it, it, to a certain extent, everyone, everyone wants to be at the fun table. 
Right, right. For one thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the other thing is, you, the, that's good. The expectation is there well, as well. And it kind of, you, you, uh, kind of expands to fit every space. I'm just saying, just a little. Mm -hmm. a little. But that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. I did not know that the first time you both had talked about this was at Yeah, it was at one of the holidays. And my mom just, sure as, as any other conversation we had, she was under the impression that I knew... Mm -hmm. A fait accompli. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that upon her demise, that I would be the one doing her makeup and her hair. Which, I, I don't even know where she would get the idea. I, even hearing it come out of your mouth right now astonishes me. I know. I, I just, I don't even, <laughs> I don't get that because dun, dun, dun. I don't know that looking at me, right, and what I do... And looking at what she does and the lengths that she goes to to do what she does to herself, right? Uh, I, that she would choose me to do her makeup and her hair for her funeral or her 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 wake or whatever. It's just it when she's laid out in state in the parlor. <laughs> I, I and and I have told her time and time again. I, I we've been to family not family funerals, but we've been to funerals of friends and things like that. And you know, some people get really distraught and they hold or touch their deceased loved one or whatever. To me, it, there's a there's a cutoff point, mm -hmm. and I am well not, at that point. At what, at what point for you? It just depends on, first of all, your connection to that person. Mm. Uh, connected or not, there's no way that I No, like you're like... Um, it could be. I mean, if it were again... Your child. Right. You see it, what I'm saying? It, it could be. It's just that I have not been put in a position mm -hmm. to ever have to grieve for right. someone close to me. And the fact that she came to me and said, you're going to do my hair, my makeup, and I just wholeheartedly didn't even hold back... I didn't even have to think about it for more than two seconds. Say no. Uh, I was like, no, mom, I'm not even going to touch you, much less do your hair and makeup. I, I don't, I don't even know. I don't yeah. have any clue as to where she would think that I would do her makeup and hair. Mm -hmm. I just assume slap on some <laughs> lipstick and fake have eyelashes. A <laughs> have a close <clothes> casket. <laughs> That's right. And be done with it. But she was like, oh, no. I'm not going to have strangers looking at me. Um, okay, see, now for me, the, that whole concept of having strangers look at you, that would be more of a body issue and less of a face <laughs> and head and neck <laughs> issue. Right? Well, you know, you're in a casket, really only seeing your chest up. Yeah, okay. So they're not seeing anything so. else. But for her, it's really important for her to still look like her i mean we've gone to funerals where and i have heard i don't like going to funerals there's certain reasons why but one of which they talk about how that person was laid up or oh my laid gosh out. laid out <laughs> what <if> <laughs> <laughs> see the importance of it you're not here anymore right at least that's not your real estate anymore no I don't necessarily know that I would care but it, it does matter to her and the funny thing is is that while she was telling me this I, the horror that I was feeling internally was obviously showing on the outside and my sister-in-law Cindy okay, was so right other there. Sister in law, yeah. Right. So my other sister in law, Cindy, so Ken's sister was there. And my mom looks at her and says, Do you believe it? Look at how she's acting or look at how she's reacting to this. And luckily for me, Cindy was just like, Oh, don't worry, Lee. She says, I will do your makeup and hair. Aww. I don't have a problem with it. Bless her heart. Uh, I was like, Phew. And I kind of looked over at her and I said to her, I said, you know, she's absolutely serious, right? This is not mm -hmm. a joke. And she's like, no, big deal. I'll handle it. And so on and so forth. And I thought to myself, man, that is a weight off of my mm -hmm. shoulders because there is no way that I could do it. And then um, later on, Cindy goes, I was kidding. 
<laughs> I know. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, talk about talk about our uh, last request. I know, right? One thing is taking her dog. Another thing is like... So when I heard the story, I actually heard it at Monday night, one of our Monday night dinners. Mm-hmm. And I remember feeling the discomfort coming off of you hmm? pretty hot and heavy. I don't... Mm-hmm. You didn't say anything about it. You were just like, mm-hmm, okay. And your mother... And this must have been quite some time after... Cindy said, oh, well, don't worry, I'll do it. Yeah. Yeah. That had to be before me. It might have been. It might have been. Or maybe at a holiday where I wasn't Or a holiday where you were maybe in another room, or maybe it was at Thanksgiving, because I think you go to your sister's at Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. I remember hearing about that at Monday Night Family Dinner, Mm -hmm. and I remember you saying very little, and your mother insisting, oh, yes, Juliet, we will be doing my hair and my makeup Mm -hmm. for me when I die. Mm. And I remember thinking, yeah, I, I remember looking at you and saying, just go along with it. <laughs> somebody else will, will, we can get somebody else to do it. And I don't ever want to disrespect anyone's final wishes or etc. but experiencing my mom passing away, yeah, there's no way in the world I would be going in and doing her makeup. Mm-mm. That's just, no, it's just not going to. Like, I can't even put my dog down <laughs> without, yeah. you know, writing a check with tears all over it. Mm-hmm. I can't even imagine what it would be like. The poor thing would end up looking like. I know, right? I, mean, I don't know, it from uh, <laughs> the clown from it. I don't know how, how I'd get through that one. Well, the funny thing to me is just how adamant she is about it. Oh, yeah. Like, it's a foregone conclusion. Yeah. it's you, a, Oh, no. Juliet it's a matter of fact it. sort oh, yes. of thing. Yes. Yeah, no. Juliet will be doing this. Yep. Yeah. She'll take care of it. I think that just is part of that generation. Yeah. And it may be a cultural a thing, too. a very matter of fact sort of thing. So ends the tale of Surgery Cat... Corpse Bride so our, and Death Takes a Taxi <laughs> for uh, our Halloween, Halloween episode. Uh, Halloween episode, yeah. And we will catch up with you on the next episode of Everyday Macaroni. Bye bye. Bye. So, how about that for a scary Halloween story? I hope you enjoyed episode three of Everyday Macaroni, our special Halloween two part episode. Our goal was, of course, to make folks laugh and feel more at ease about a difficult subject that just seemed appropriate for Halloween. And I hope you took it in that context. I hope you enjoyed listening and sharing a laugh or two with us. Stay tuned for more Everyday Macaroni Adventures on future podcast episodes. And if you want to see some pictures of us, you can follow me on Instagram by searching at joyalfordbrand, hashtag everydaymacaroni, Hashtag the Dollar Llama, or on my Facebook page, New Cash View. Again, thanks for listening and join us for the next episode of Every Day It's Macaroni! Macaroni.